Welcome back to the Bet Victor Championship League, the first ranking event of the season and a perfect setting for it at the Morningside Arena here in Leicester. We're gearing up for the evening session on the final day of stage two as we look to complete the lineup for tomorrow's winner's day. Great to have you with us again. I'm Faker Ruthers. Former world champion Ken Doherty is next to me as well. It was a fantastic afternoon session. Let's take a look at how it played out. Judd Trump is the star attraction in Group A of the Championship League and made a great start to his... What a great afternoon of snooker it was and Group A certainly wide open at the moment. This opening match of the evening session may give us more of an indication perhaps of how it's going to go. Stuart Carrington, who's top of the table up against world number one, Judd Trump, who drew his opening match. Tom Ford back in the mix as well, as you can see. He lost his opener 3-0, but won his second by the same scoreline. So he's second, but of course he's played two matches already, whereas Judd Trump and Stuart Carrington have just played one each. And that is the match that we're focusing on first and foremost here in the evening yeah. session, Ken. And it's been set up perfectly for us. It has, definitely. And it's a, sort of a must-win, really, for Judd Trump. So the pressure's on him a little bit. I think Stuart Carrington could afford a draw and might be happy with a draw. But I think if, if, if it is a draw, then Judd Trump is, will be relying on other results, and you don't want that. You want the real the ball to be in your own court and your sort of destiny uh, down to yourself. So Judd Trump really has to win this match, a bit more pressure on him. I'm expecting him to play well. I thought, like, the, you know, the signs of the first couple of frames against Jimmy Robertson looked in imperious form, missed one red, and then the whole match changed. But I think it might see a little bit of a different Judd Trump uh, tonight. And the fact that he saw Stuart Carrington play and how well he played, made that wonderful 1-2-5. So he knows he's going to be up against it. He's going to have to raise his game, but I'm expecting that from Judd Trump tonight. I'm going to get you to know your colours to the mast. <laughs> Who's winning this one? I t I'm going to go slightly for Judd Trump, but uh, don't be surprised the way Stuart Carrington played. He's a very, very uh, tough nut to crack, and he looks in good form as well. So I think the pressure, as I said, is on Judd Trump, but I, I think he's going to come up with the goods, but it remains to be seen. OK, well, I'll hold you to that later. <laughs> we shall see what happens. Let's take a look at what's been going on in Table 2 and Group B, though, shall we? Because that's already kicking off. Uh, Ricky Walden looking to get another three points on the board against Fergal O'Brien. He then stays on to face the leader of this group, Mark Allen, which could end up being the decider. If you have a look at the table here, this is how close uh, this is. Mark Allen uh, on six points. Ricky Walden with a, ga with a game in hand, a match in hand, if you mm. like, um, actually on three points behind him, which means that that is going to be the decider, uh, which is absolutely fascinating. You can watch that over on matchroom.live. Mm. However, let's get this evening session underway, <laughs> shall we, on the main table here and Group A, a fascinating match in prospect between Stuart Carrington and the world number one, Judd Trump. And your commentary team for this, Mark Davis and Phil Yates. It is the penultimate evening of this 21-day event. We are getting down to the crux of the tournament, and that is the man that was favourite to win it before a ball was struck. He's favourite to win most tournaments he enters these days. The world number one, Judd Trump. But he's got his work cut out tonight. A couple of victories against Stuart Carrington. 
And then sure. against Tom Ford a little later, okay. you would feel essential sure. match. Okay. for Trump to advance to the finals day tomorrow. Whenever you're ready, choose a break. Yeah. The first frame. Should Trump to break. When he floated in the 128 total clearance to take a 2 0 lead over Jimmy Robertson first up this afternoon. I thought he was a certainty to claim three points there. But then, in first in the next frame, he overcut a short-range red. And in the end, Robertson made breaks of 59 and 63 to salvage a draw. As for Stuart Carrington, he could not have made a better start to the group. 3-0 over Tom Ford. Strange old match, really. The first frame lasted over 42 minutes. Carrington potted a good pink to middle to edge it. Then he had a run of 125. Finally, the third frame was reverting to the first. Scrappy, lengthy, but it went to Carrington. And that's why he goes into this match, Mark Davis, with genuine optimism. Yep, that's right, Phil. I mean, he couldn't have had a better start, Stuart. 3-0 uh, over Tom, so in a very good position. You know, even a draw here is, is, it would be a good result. Not just playing Judd, but just for the group. In a draw here, and he won his last game, then then I think that'd be enough. And, uh, you know, really good player, Stuart. I've always rated him. I think he's a fantastic player. So Judd's got his work cut out here. As ever, the first frame is so important. Took no time to work that out. The line and the pace, just about right. One thing we did remind ourselves when Carrington played forward, he's very tactically astute, is Stewart. Yeah, he is, Phil. I mean, he's just an all-round good player. He's all round good, all-round solid game. You can score heavy, safety's good. Good temperament, very good temperament. You don't give a lot of emotion away, Stuart. And they're just a tough player. Group B is being played out on table two. Ricky Walden started with a victory earlier this afternoon, and he's just on the, the verge of taking the first frame against Fergal O'Brien to start the evening session. 60. You get the feeling there. Walden, Allen, a little later, will decide it all. You could see Ricky playing well. He had problems with his back for a season or two ago that caused him a lot of problems. And I think that's um, sort of behind him now. So it's good to see playing how, how we all know he can. Yeah, I spoke to Ricky on several occasions and his manager, Lee, also about the, the issue. And basically, it wasn't too bad in matches because it was only a, a relatively short amount of time. The problem was it stopped him practising. Yeah, exactly, Phil. But I'm, I mean, as we all know, you know, pra practising is a is a ma massive part of pre preparing for the matches. And if you can't do that as you would like, not putting the hours in as you want, you know, it's not just affects your game; it affects you mentally because you just feel like you haven't prepared as well as you normally would. So, but obviously there's nothing we can do about that. It's out of his hands, just one of those things. But, you know, it's good to see that hopefully that, you know, that's gone away and it won't come back. Well, after that, it's entirely possible Stuart Carrington won't come back to the table in this frame. I know that's an early call with no ball spotted, but this is a really good chance for one of the game's premier break builders. Well, It's always tough going for reds. Stuart knew he was going for that red, but he knew he was canning into other reds and wasn't really sure if he was going to be on a colour. It, just, it does just take your eye away from the pot sometimes, playing that kind of shot. You always, when you play pots, you want to be in control of things, and he was never really going to be in control of that cue ball. 
and it was a tough pot anyway. You can see here, it was always going into the reds, and Eight. like I say, it wasn't a gimme pot to start with. And when you're not sure where the position is, you can just, uh, you know, take your eye off the pot a little bit. No. And, you know, judging these positions normally does score very heavily. Seventeen. Now it's a bit early in the fight to talk about going to the pack. There's still two or three loose reds, but it's sort of good to get off. Going 25. to the pack from sort of low on the black, if he decides to go into him from the black. Just the way the, the pack is shaped. I think you'd probably take at least one more of the loose reds first. He's way short of pace there. I'm playing for two in the two to the left of the table into the middle pocket or possibly the one at the bottom of the pack he played for. I think you can still cut that in, but it's very thin. Thirty-three. Well, that was one of those occasions, Mark, where a poor positional shot has actually done him, in the end, a favour. Yeah, it certainly has. He played it really well, though. He played it as good as you could. He just certainly didn't want to be as low as that on the red. But as you say, it's worked out perfectly. 40. Look at this for a start from Ricky Walden. 118. He's got this black for a 125 total 40. clearance. Walden is a class act, and he showed it there. Forty-eight. All blacks here, Phil. So far, the way the reds are, it's very little talk about maximums, but it is Judd at the table. Forty-nine. It's a pretty good chance. Well, if there's going to be a maximum in the Championship League, if you're not playing, Mark, you've surely got to be commentating. You're always involved in them. By the way, folks, Mark Davis made a a world record at two one four sevens in the same Championship League a few years ago. No one's ever made two one four sevens in the same professional tournament until Mark. Fifty six. Just a little bit short on the red here. He doesn't want to push the boat out going for maximums when he hasn't won the frame yet. So yeah, I think wisely going up for the blue or bulk colour. Well I thought he was. He actually tried to get back on the black, so he was going for it. Fifty seven. He's done it. He caught the jaws of the yellow pocket. So he's not perfect. But it's, it's not too bad. 50. Again, not ideal. He's got 64. The red into the green pocket, which you, you'd expect Judd to, to pot. I think he was playing for it in the in the middle pocket again. Sixty-five. Now I'm getting a little excited here. This is a realistic chance. First off, pot the black and one more red to secure the frame.
72. Seventy-three. Well, what a pity that is. You may still try and cut it in. Does need a couple of snookers, Stuart, at the moment. The fallback situation, Mark, is to make yet another century and add to that already mind-boggling total. Yeah, I think the other reason is, I mean, I know he's missed the blue there, but just to finish the frame off, because Stuart's obviously going to come back to the table and, you, you know, you could be 10, 15 minutes of trying to get snookers. So, he did really want that. But as you say, his, his, like I said earlier, I don't know what his, his strike rate what strike rate is for centuries in the last two or three years, or you know, for even longer than that. But it's, it's, when you're watching, it just seems ridiculous. Cheers, Stuart. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think it's almost a surprise these days when he doesn't make at least one century in every contest he's involved in. Well, look at against Stuart Carrington. Trump leads 6-1 in career meetings. In the quarter-final of the 2019-2018 Scottish Open, Trump made three centuries, and in the last 64 of the German Masters last year, he made two against Stuart. So Carrington is well aware of the punishment. He's not alone, Phil. <laughs> plenty, plenty more have had that kind of treatment off Judd the last few years. But yeah, like I say, he's, it's amazing. If he if he plays a match and doesn't have a century, it's, it just seems incredible. Their first meeting was actually Carrington's Crucible debut at the 2015 World Championship. He gave Trump a good workout. Trump won 10-6. Carrington's lone victory over Trump, 4-2 in the first round of the Northern Ireland Open in 2017. One. Well, the first frame now is definitely under lock and key. Eight. Nine. So we had the excitement of a 147 quest in this frame. In the second frame, we're going to be launching our Fifth. competition with a tremendous prize. And the question Sixth. also involves a 147. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Thirty. Thirty-one. Now this, Mark, is when I like to see Trump play, especially when a frame is won and he can play these ridiculous shots that no one else can. I was just thinking that myself, Phil. I thought when he was going to start doing it, it was getting a bit boring, to be honest. But he does some, you know, some of the shots I've seen him play the last few years. Are just incredible. 
just from 36 on the first frame. Nothing too spectacular there, but breaks of 73, then 36, and without any alarm whatsoever, Judd Trump takes a 1-0 lead over Stuart Carrington. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena the second in frame. Leicester. This Stuart is day 20 of 21 in the season opening Bed Victor Championship League. The big guns are firing. Judd Trump is favourite to win this group on table one today and go into the finals day tomorrow. He started off with a two-all draw, if you didn't see it this afternoon, against Jimmy Robertson, having led 2-0. So Badley wants a victory here over Stuart Carrington, and his start has been ideal. Although ideal well. would not describe Carrington's break-off in frame two. Yeah, I've seen that, but I don't know what it what it is, but I've seen that break-off a lot in this um, the last two or three days. The red coming up past the blue spot and leaving it into the middle pocket. I'm not too sure why it is. Maybe they're just misjudging the, the side they're playing off the break and catching, well, they're clearly catching the bottom red too thick. That's why it's coming back up the table. But it's, it's happened a lot. Five. You can al almost hear Mark Williams from South Wales shouting, I told you so. <laughs> Well, I mean, if it keeps happening, I think a lot more people... I think a few started to do it, didn't they, follow Mark? It seems to have... Uh, I haven't seen 12. too many people do it in this tournament so far. But if, if we're coming back, if uh, people keep breaking and leaving meds on... Thirteen. I know Mark got a bit of stick for that. I, I really don't see a problem with the break. I mean, it, you hardly... I know he left the red once, I think, but... You're hardly ever going to leave a ball on. In two shots, two shots later, you're, you're back to normal. So, and and the the bake off seems to be the one where you're cons con consistently leaving a long red on. It's actually difficult not to leave a long red on a lot of the time. So, you know, I think the bake off is not great to watch, obviously. But like I say, it's not. It doesn't prolong the frame and it doesn't tie the black up. So I actually think there's, there's not a problem with it at all. Yeah, you're right. The black being Eight. in the open guaranteed, I think actually promotes a quicker frame. Nineteen. He's just come a little bit straight on the black here, Judd. 
not perfect. Look, he's looking there. Might have to play for the the right end of the pack into the the middle pocket. So far, so good for Judd Trent. 26. So far, even better for Ricky Walden. 88. He's got a chance here of back-to-back -back centuries. A golden chance. 27. 94. Nothing tricky for Ricky. Everything straightforward. What a start that is. Ricky Walden. Double century leads Fergal O'Brien 2 0. Thirty four. Slightly hampered on this red. If he's if he's straight, he's gonna find it difficult to get a top side of the blue, which is what he needs to get into the pack. I mean I think the red at the bottom of the pack does go. It'd be a very precise position shot to get onto that one. It's a slight angle, but it's a tough part, so I think you've done the right thing just dropping it 35. in. 35. He's looking to get another red at the bottom of the pack there. As I say, he needs a precise positional shot from here to do that. You could play the blue with... Left hand side and off off two, off two could into the side of the pack. I think you're playing for the loose one by the looks of it. Yeah, it's way shorter pace. Forty. I don't think there's any plants into the pack, so it'll just be a safety shot. Just from 40. Cue ball into the pockets. Just the, the minor irritation of four penalty points. So, the end of that break does give me the opportunity to keep my promise and to let you know what our competition is. First, I'll give you the prize. It is two VIP hospitality packages to the final of the Champion of Champions on November the 21st in Bolton. That includes two tickets for at least the front couple of rows. You get to go into the official backstage lounge with the players, the officials, even the commentators, Mark, if you want to. <laughs> It really is a phenomenal prize. You get to see the players practice on the, the practice tables before they go out there. And as I say, the view of the table itself is second to none. So that's the prize. This is the question. Who's the only player to make a 147 break in the Champion of Champions? I'll repeat. Who's the only player to make a 147 break in the Champion of Champions? Get your answers in nice and early. We will announce the winners tomorrow. Just go to Twitter at CL Snooker. Good one, that Phil. Oh, I have no idea with the answer to that one. It was a really good shot job play there, by the way. It's a swerve around the blue to catch the red thin enough. And he's got Stuart in quite a bit of trouble here. Could be a shot to nothing on, actually. Yeah, well, not so much trouble as I thought. I didn't 
Looked like he was going towards the black, but it was a natural shot to nothing on that red. Still a fantastic part. Isn't it amazing when you've got a player into that kind of situation and they've only got basically one viable choice? It means they've got clarity of thought. They're not befuddled as to what to do. They know exactly. Well. And it's a case so often where they knock the ball in. Yes, that's right. It does happen a lot, that. Is your current somewhat? Now then, an opportunity to counter-attack. Oh. Structure cannon there a little bit, Stuart. Eight. If it does play the red on the cushion, this is tough. Very tough shot. This shot always tough on these tables, especially so. Did Nine. really well. It just grazed the near jaw. But at that pace, it was always going to be fine. Especially when you when you know you should have had something easier to be playing, and then you've got to play a really tough pot. But you just got to put that out of your mind and focus. But it was, yeah, really, really good shot that was. That said, no. the pink is a real test of queuing and nerve. No. Very jabby, nowhere near. That wasn't his normal cue delivery, Mark. No, it wasn't, Phil. He did, like I say, it was a bit jabby. A bit jabby, that one. Normally cues the ball much, much smoother than that. I mean, it was a pressure Straight shot, to be nine. fair. There was a lot of pressure one. on that pink. He knew if he missed it that he's probably going to lose the frame. That's the battle with this game, trying to just not put any importance on one shot or another. Just trying to treat them all the same, but it's Eight. that is very difficult to do. It's easy to say, very difficult to do. The top players do it better than anyone, which is one of the reasons why they're the top players. No. What a good plant that was as well. There was significant distance between the the two balls, quite a, a narrow entry point to the pocket as well. Sixty. A bit colour red here, and it should be enough to win the fame for Judd. Seventeen. One short spell of alarm for Trump. But the frames won now. Twenty five.
32. Ricky Walden is on fire on the other table on a break of 59, 59 with a chance of making just from 32 on the centuries. Right. As for table one, well, that is now over. Judd Trump has taken a 2 0 lead and he's done so pretty nicely. Trump 2, Carrington 0. He's won some really big tournaments, Ricky Walden, over the years. As Mark Davis was saying, a bad back has really interrupted his career. But now he's in full fitness and in full flow. What a performance here to make three consecutive centuries in a best of five frame match. That is not unique, but it's very rare indeed. So Walden is going to beat Fergal O'Brien 3-0. The third frame. And that sets up the, Just the group decider break. between Walden and Mark Allen. Here, well, this group, Group A, is a lot more open. But if Judd Trump can win this frame, suddenly his status as group favourite is revived, restored. Did he raise the hand there? The gap yeah. past the red at the bottom of the bunch was so tight. Can't imagine he intended to pot it, but if he did, every credit. No, he did raise his hand, Phil. He did apologise, so he was playing a slightly thicker, just safety shot. Five. Stuart Carrington, five.
by the way, spare a thought for Fergal O'Brien, who's come all the way from Dublin. He scored one point in the match against Walden. Walden making breaks of 125, 101 and 104. Earlier on, he was on the receiving end against Mark Allen. Fergal lost 3-0. So in six frames today, he's averaged seven points per frame. Yeah, that's, that's tough to take. But, I mean, you know, when you've got the best players around in these short matches, that you know, that can happen. You know, Fergal could easily do it to... It could have been the other way around, and Fergal could be doing it to those guys. So it's just, you know, the way it goes. But, like I say, there's always things up for... You know, every spot is, is ranking points of money, so clearly not what Fergal wanted to happen. But if he can win his last game, then maybe One. he could, you know, finish third in the group. I don't know the situation at the table, but it's a possibility. There's always something to play for. Yes, he could. His match against Peter Lyons is basically the third and fourth place decider. A good positional shot there for Trump might have been Just the more. decider in this frame but he has to settle for patience and safety. Well, it's almost unfair, Mark. What a strike that was. Yeah, it just... With ease, I mean, it's... Well, it just looked like he hardly, hardly hit the cue ball. Easily got back for the blue. You know, some players just would really struggle to, from that distance, you know, screw back at all, let alone, you know, back Six. up for the blue, right angle on the blue. It's such a... Amazing weapon he's got. I mean, when you're talking the levels that he plays at, playing those shots that a lot of, even the top players just can't play. Not necessarily that one in particular, but, you know, some of the, some of the other deep screw shots he plays. You know, that could be the difference between winning and losing when you're playing at the level Judd's playing at. And it's, it's Seven. Uh, you know, amazing weapon to have. The group decider on table two has begun. Allen against Walden. Should be fluent Six. stuff. Yeah, this could be the key shot in this frame. And the pink is clearly going to open the reds up. So if this works out well, this could set him up for a fine winning chance. I mean, that's too bad. The pink's freed the pink Thanks. up into. At least two pockets. He's either on the red in the corner or the red in the middle. So that's, that's pretty good, really. Swenson. 
just about on the right side of the blue after initiating this chance with the most wonderful shot. A shot mark that, if you're up against it, must be intimidating because 25. it's a shot, as you said before, that most players don't have in the locker. 26. Nah, I mean, yeah, it is intimidating. It's, well, I think it's just jealousy more than intimidating, to be honest. I just wish they could play it. I mean, but he could do that if the veg was right over the pocket. He could still scoot back to that position. Whereas, like I say, you know, most players can't. They haven't got that kind of cue power. And he, I mean, that, that shot he played there, he wasn't just getting it there. It was minimal effort doing it. He just stroked it in. And, you know, that's, you know, brilliant to have. And, you know, most players would just love to be able to, to have that. Because, like I say, even if he missed it, he, he wasn't leaving anything. The white was in a safe position on the cushion past the blue spot. So... Just takes the pressure off the off the pot as well. Yeah, that shot. It's a money maker and a hard breaker. Forty six. It's hard to really see we're just gonna go wrong here, to be honest. He's starting to get in his groove a little bit and need a few more pots and the frame be safe. Fifty-four. Just colour on one more red will be enough to leave Stuart needing a snooker. Fifty-seven. Yes, and this sets up the group decider between Ford and Trump last on this evening. Just put it back in his own hands, Phil, isn't it? He's, he knows now if he beats Tom, then he's he's won the group. 63. That's all you can really ask for going into the last match. Sixty-four. You are kidding me. You are kidding me. What a shot that was. Now rattle this red in down the cushion, screw back for the blue and I'll give you the keys to the city. We can't complain. The there was so much Come entertainment value Thanks. there. Thanks, Stuart Carrington um, found the world champion, yesterday. or the world number one, I should say, the former world champion, pretty close to his best. Judd Trump making three half-century breaks, looking good from the start, and now he's in place to top the group. He has one more task against Tom Ford later on this evening. Right now, though, he's a 3-0 winner over Stuart Carrington. when Judd Trump plays smoothly, fluently, and attackingly. 
and he's at his best. There is no better sight in the Green Bay's game. So many wonderful shots in that match. And basically, Carrington was no match for the juggernaut.